Hey guys, it's Miss Simpson and it's time for reading today. So we are going to read chapter nine of our book, Gregor the Overlander today. And um, so when we finished chapter eight, we read about um, they the whole fight with the rats and they actually killed ooh, both of the rats in the process. And so both of the rats are now dead and Gregor dropped the torch and burnt up the cave that they just came out of. So that was pretty crazy, right? So we today, I am just going to read chapter nine to you. I don't necessarily have a focus for chapter nine or what I want you to, to be um, focusing on. I do want you, however, to pause right now and make a prediction about what you think is going to happen in chapter nine. Now, remember chapter eight was the fight with the rats. So what do you think is going to happen in chapter nine? nine. Okay, so you should have unpaused by now. I think that they're going to go back to the city of Regalia, and I think that Gregor is going to get in trouble for what was going on. I really, really do, because he ran out and caused a big old stink in the middle of everything when he didn't have to do that. So we are going to read chapter nine, and then you are going to answer questions over chapter seven, eight, and nine. So what I'm noticing a lot of y'all are doing on your questions is you're only answering it for that one chapter. Guys, this is over three chapters. Your questions today are the last three chapters that we read. So don't just focus on chapter nine. Think about all three, chapter seven, chapter eight, and chapter nine. And I'll go back over those at the end with you and just talk to you a little bit about what happened, maybe help you get your summary together. And um, all right, let's get started. Okay, chapter nine. Gregor watched the water flush under his eyes as he clung to the bat. For a moment, he felt relieved to have escaped the rats, but the fear of hurtling through the air on a wounded bat quickly overcame him. Boots had her arms clasped so tightly around his neck that he could barely breathe, let alone speak. And what would he say to Merith anyway? Wow, I'm really sorry about that whole thing back on the beach. He'd had no idea, of course, about the rats. But hadn't the Underlanders tried to warn him? No, they'd spoken of danger, but no one had specifically mentioned rats except the co cockroaches. Rat bad, one had said, and later they had talked about how much the rats would pay to bargain with Luxa. He and Boots could have been sold to the rats, and then what? He felt nauseous and shut his eyes to block out the churning water. The image on the of the carnage on the beach filled his head and he decided the view of the water was better. It turned to blackness as the light from the fire diminished. When light flickered off the waves again, he knew they were nearing Regalia. A group of underlanders waited on the dock. They whisked the unconscious Perdita and her bleeding bat away. They tried to take Merith on a stretcher, but he brushed them off and insisted on helping carry his bat inside. Gregor sat on the dock where Merith had shoved him as they landed, wishing he could disappear. Boots was quiet now, but he could feel her little muscles were rigid with fear. 15, 20 minutes passed, maybe? He couldn't tell. Up! Someone snarled at him, and he saw Merith glaring down at him. The gash on his forehead was bandaged, the right side of his face bruised and swollen. Find your feet, Overlander! Merith barked. Had he actually thought this guy was shy a few hours ago? Gregor slowly straightened his stiff legs and stood. Merith tightly tied his hands behind his back. No question about it this time. He was definitely a prisoner. Another guard joined Merith, and they marched Gregor ahead of them. His legs moved numbly. What would they do to him now? He paid no attention to where they were going. He just walked whatever way he was pushed. He had a vague sense of climbing a lot of stairs before he entered a large diamond-shaped room. There was a table in the middle of it. Merith pushed him down on a stool by, roaring, by a roaring fireplace. The two guards stepped back a couple of paces, watching him like hawks. I'm that dangerous, he thought foggily. Boots began to stir on his back. She tugged on one of his ears. Home, she pleaded. Go home, Gecko. Gregor had no answer for her. People were hurrying past the door, talking in excited voices. Some peered in at him, but no one came in. In the warmth of the fire, he realized he was frozen. He was soaked in river water up to his waist and shivered from the wind and the horror of what he just witnessed, of what he'd taken part in. Boots was in better condition. Her backpack seemed to be waterproof, and she was pressed up against him. Still, her toes felt like ice when they brushed his arm. Fatigue washed over Gregor, and he wished he could lie down, just lie down and fall asleep and wake up in his bed where he could see the car lights flash across the walls, but he'd given up thinking this was a dream. 
What had happened to the Underlanders? Perdita, her wounded bat, and Maris? If they died, it would be his fault. He wouldn't even try to argue that. Just then, Luxa appeared, burning white with fury. She crossed the room and struck him on the face. His head snapped to the side and Boots let out a cry. No hitting, she squeaked. No, no, no hitting. She shook her tiny little index finger at Luxa. Hitting was absolutely forbidden in Gregor's house and had only taken Boots a few timeouts to realize it. Apparently, it wasn't acceptable among the Underlanders either because Gregor heard Vicus's voice ring out sharply from the doorway. Luxa! Looking like she'd, she'd love to slap him again, Luxa stalked to the mantle and glared into the fire. For shame, Luxa, Vicus said, crossing to her. She turned on him, spitting venom. Two flyers are down and we cannot awaken Perdita because the Overlander must escape. Strike him? I say we throw him into the dead land and let him take his chances, shouted Luxa. But that as it may, be that as it may, Luxa, this is not seemly, said Vicus. But Gregor could see the news had upset him. Both rats are dead, he asked. Dead and in the river, said Luxa. We scorch the land. This martyr of we, you and I shall take up later, or matter of we, you should take up later, said Vicus severely. The council is not pleased. I care not what pleases the council, muttered Luxa, but she avoided Vicus's gaze. So she wasn't supposed to be there, thought Gregor. She's in trouble, too. He wished he could enjoy the moment, but he was too racked with worry, guilt, and exhaustion to care. Besides, Luxa had saved his life taking out Shed. He owed her one, he guessed, but he was still stinging from the slap, and he didn't bring it up. No hitting, said Boots again, and Vicus turned to them. Like Luxa, Gregor was unable to meet his eyes. What did the overlander... What did the Overlander Luxa fight or flee? asked Ficus. Henry says he fought, Luxa admitted grudgingly, but without skill or knowledge of weapons. Gregor felt like saying, hey, all I had was a stupid torch, but why bother? Then he has much courage, said Ficus. Courage without caution makes for early death, so you tell me daily, said Luxa. So I tell you, and do you hear, said Ficus, raising his eyebrows. You hear not as he hears not. You are both very young for deafness. <laughs> Unleash his hands and leave us, he said to the guards. Gregor felt a blade cut through the ropes on his wrist. He rubbed the marks, trying to restore circulation to his hands. His cheek throbbed, and he wouldn't, but he wouldn't give Luxa the satisfaction of seeing him touch it. Boots reached over his shoulder and touched the creases on his wrists. Ow, she whimpered. Ow. I'm okay, Boots, he said. But she just shook her head. Gather us here, said Vika, sitting at the table. Neither Gregor nor Luxa moved. Gather us here, for we must discuss, said Vika, slapping his hand on the stone surface. This time they both took seats as far from each other as possible. Gregor pulled Boots up over his head and out of the backpack. She settled on his lap, racking Gregor's arms tightly around her and looking at Vicus and Luxa with large, solemn eyes. I guess after tonight, Boots won't think the whole world is her friend, thought Gregor. She had to find out sometime, but it still made him sad. Okay, I'm going to pause right there real quick. It says she won't find out the whole world is her friend. One thing that it talked about in our last questions after... Um, a few chapters ago was something, a character trait of Boots is that Gregor admired. And that character trait was her, I would say, openness, her love, her willingness, how she always made so many friends. He really admired that about her. It did frustrate him, but he also admired it. And he wanted to be like that. He wanted to be able to make friends wherever he went to. And so now he's thinking that character trait might go away because of what just happened with the rats. And I would think that he might be right. He might, she might not be so open to everybody. So for you guys who are a little bit confused on that question, that was what the Gregor admired about Boots was how she was so friendly to everybody and she always made friends wherever she went. Vicus began, Gregor the Overlander, there is much you do not understand. You do not speak, but your face speaks for you. You are worried. You are angered. You believe you were right to flee those who kept you against your will, but feel sorely that we have suffered in your saving. We told you not of the rats, yet Lexa blamed you for our losses. We seem to be your enemy and yet we gave you time. Gregor didn't answer. He thought that pretty much summed things up except for the fact that Luxa had hit him. Vicus read his mind. Luxa should not have struck you, but your fight invited horrible death to those she loved. This is greatly felt by her, as both her parents were killed by rats. Luxa gasped. This is not his affair. 
She looked so distressed that Gregor almost objected as well. Whatever she'd done to him, this wasn't his business. But I make it so, Luxa, as I have to cause to believe that Gregor may himself lack a father, continued Vicus. Now it was Gregor's turn to look shocked. How do you know that? I do not know for sure. I only guess. Tell me, Gregor the Overlander, do you recognize this? Vicus reached into his cloak and pulled something out. It was a metal ring. Several keys dangled from it, but it was the roughly braided loop of red, black, and blue leather that made Gregor's heart stop. He had woven it himself during crafts class at the very summer camp that Lizzie was at now. You could make thing, three things, a bracelet, a bookmark, or a keychain. Gregor had picked the keychain. His father never went anywhere without it. And we are on part two, the quest. Okay, so let's talk about what happened. Let's start off with chapter seven. So in chapter seven, this is where Gregor decided to make his escape from Regalia. He planned it out. They took the shower. They decided to make his escape and he escaped. He ran and he ran into a huge monstrous rat. Then in chapter eight is where he found out the rats were the very nicest of people and they had an entire battle where where the underlanders came to help Gregor and save him. Now, the underlanders that came got severely hurt, most of them. They had bats that were hurt. Now they have somebody, Perdita, who won't wake up in the hospital. So that was a big thing. And chapter nine was the aftermath of the of the battle. How Vicus was not as mad at Gregor as Lexa was. Lexa was super mad because her parents were killed by bats too. And Gregor had lost his father and Vicus had a guess that he had lost his father. And Vicus showed Gregor his father's keys. So Gregor's father went missing, remember? He doesn't have a dad right now because he's missing. And the Underland people have his keys. So pause the video right now, make a prediction. Where's Gregor's father? What happened to Gregor's father? All right, so you should have unpaused and you should have already made your prediction. So what you're going to do today is you are going to answer the chapter questions. They are for chapter seven, eight, and nine. So let's take a look at them real quick before I let you go. Okay, there is a short answer that's one or two sentences. How does Gregor's opinion of the underlanders change after he meets the rats? What do you think happened? When he escapes the palace and floats down the river, he looks back to see two underlanders are yelling something at him. What do you think the underlanders are saying? Remember, he escaped the palace, he's on the raft, he's on the lifeboat, and he turns around, and the underlanders are screaming. What do you think they're saying? The book didn't tell us, but I want you to take a guess. Then, what would you title the, the three chapters? Seven, eight, and nine. What would you title those chapters? Then tell me what happens. This is a summary. What happened in the chapter? I just gave you a pretty decent summary, short, quick, and to the point of chapter seven, eight, and nine. So I want you to tell me your summary of seven, eight, and nine. Out of those three chapters, seven, eight, and nine, what's your favorite part of it? What new words did you learn in these chapters? And then I want you to draw a picture of something you think would represent these chapters. So let's take a look real quick. I'm gonna help you out with some words that you might not know that you, um, need some help with. So I am looking in here and I see the word disengaged. A lot of people do know what that is, but I don't know if you do. So disengaged is a word that was um, bigger that you might want to look up. Let's keep looking. Do you know what the word monstrous rat, monstrous, if you've ever seen that word, protruded, protruded, what does that mean? Protruded out of his mouth. Keep going, preoccupied, illuminating. This book is higher level and I read it to you to hopefully help us get up to that to that level. This is about a fifth grade level. No, middle of the year, fourth grade, fifth grade level, which you guys almost are. OK, let's keep going and let's check on some words that we might not know and then I'll let you go. OK, 
Do you know what the word, I haven't seen any just yet in chapter nine, diminished, there we go. Diminished, what does the word diminished mean? Let's try to find one more, got it. Solemn, solemn eyes, what does that mean? Okay, so now you have some words. You do need to write one down since I went over it with you. You do need to make sure to write one down and then draw a picture of something you think represents the chapters. Remember, this is chapter seven, chapter eight, and chapter nine. Chapter seven was the escape. Chapter eight was the kind of the battle with the rats. And chapter nine was the um, aftermath of what happened to Gregor when everything was over.